Journalists from around the world gathered at Singapore's International Media Center for the upcoming summit between US President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. More than 2,500 journalists are expected to turn up and cover the events. Pope Francis said he hoped a forthcoming summit in Singapore between Trump and Kim will lead to peace for Korea. The Pope said to the people of Korea a special thought of friendship and prayed that the talks can contribute to the development of a positive path. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Sunday said he was ready to meet his U.S. counterpart Donald Trump as soon as Washington was ready, adding Vienna could be a possible menu for such a summit. When asked about U.S. President Donald Trump's suggestion to readmit Russia to the G7 group, President Putin said Russia did not choose to leave the G7 group of nations and would be happy to see its member countries in Moscow. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had no comment for reporters seeking reaction from him after President Donald Trump criticized the Canadian leader on Twitter as weak and dishonest in the wake of the Group of Seven summit. The US and Canada swung sharply towards the diplomatic and trade crisis as top White House advisors lashed out at Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau day after U.S. President Donald Trump called him very dishonest and weak. German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas said U.S. President Donald Trump's decision to back out of a group of seven communicates through a Twitter message has destroyed trust and Europe's answer must be to stick even more closely together. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said that no country together ポイス制限措置の応酬はどの国の利益ともならないいかなる措置もWTOのルールに従って行われるべきであります the southwestern French city of Bia Brits will become the next city to host the G7 summit in the summer of 2019. The attendees will include the leaders of the seven G7 member states as well as representatives of the European Union. India, along with other member countries of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, signed 22 documents with emphasis on driving youth against a radicalization on the second day of the SCO summit in coastal China city of Qingdao. Chinese State Council and Foreign Minister Wang Yi said the Shanghai Cooperation Organization can contribute to the improvement of relations between India and Pakistan, two new SCO members. Russia as well as Kazakh presidents on Sunday vowed to fully implement the Iran nuclear deal, also known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. Three leaders made their stance at the plenary session of the 18th SCO meeting in Qingdao. Xi Jinping and his Iranian counterpart Hassan Rouhani agreed on Sunday to step up pragmatic cooperation between the two countries. The two leaders reached the consensus during talks after attending the 18th SCO summit in the coastal city of Qingdao. Chinese President Xi Jinping, whose country is locked in a high-stakes trade dispute with the United States, said China rejects selfish short cited trade policies and called for building an open global economy.
Chinese President Xi Jinping met with Afghan President Mohammad Ashraf Ghani in the eastern Chinese city of Qingdao, with the two sides agreeing to deepen cooperation. She said China and Afghanistan are traditional friendly neighbors and the two countries have always been understanding, trusting and supporting each other. Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi also said China and Russia will work together to maintain regional peace and stability under the framework of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Chinese President Xi Jinping and his uh, Mongolian counterpart pledged to enhance uh, bilateral cooperation between their meeting at the SCO summit, describing China and Mongolia as close neighbors linked by mountains and rivers. She said that developing bilateral relations is the fundamental interest of the two people. China and Belarus agreed to deepen bilateral cooperation under the Belt and Road Initiative when Chinese President Xi Jinping met with his Belarusian counterpart Alexander Lukashenko on Sunday. Chinese President Xi Jinping called for carrying forward the Shanghai spirit to surmount difficulties, diffuse risks and meet challenges. She made the remarks at the plenary session of the 18th STO Summit in Qingdao. Chinese President Xi Jinping said that new achievements have been made during the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit. On behalf of leaders of the SCO member states, she briefed the press on outcomes of the 18 SCO Summit at a joint press conference in the coastal city of Qingdao. Chinese medical team saved two United Nations employees who were injured during an attack in Mali's northern city, Gao, on Friday. Unidentified personnel attacked a vehicle of the United Nations uh, multi-dimensional integrated stabilization mission in Mali, killing one and injuring two others. A Baghdad storage site housing ballot boxes from Iraq's May, May elections caught fire and first responders are attempting to control it. The ballot boxes are part of a manual recount of votes from the May election, mandated in law passed by the Iraqi parliament on June 6th. Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi said that the burning of a storage site in Baghdad where ballot boxes were kept was part of a plot to harm Iraq's democratic process. The first government indication the incident was deliberate. The lawyer of a former Iraqi refugee detained in France for war crimes said that his client denied all allegations. The lawyer said his client had never joined Islamic State as the administrator of the Tikrit and Samara regions in Iraq. A Guatemalan official said poor communication between Guatemalan government and volcano experts may have led to the delayed evacuation during the eruption of Fuego volcano. Families prepare to bury their loved ones in Guatemala as the rescue effort continues to dig up more volcano victims. A total of 109 people have been killed due to volcano Fuego's eruption in Guatemala. Angry Guatemalans take to the streets to demand the resignation of the President Jimmy Morales for his government's inadequate response over the disaster of the Fuego volcano eruption. Tens of thousands of supporters of Romania's left-wing government took to the streets of Bucharest in an unprecedented protest against abuses of the country's own judiciary, several members of which are embroiled in corruption cases. Masaya, a city battling at the front lines of Nicaragua's heated anti-government protest, once again became the scene of a fierce street battles 
that saw one man die of a bullet wound to the heart. Women in Belfast, Cardiff, Edinburgh and London wore the colours of the suffragette uh, movement green, white and violet as part of a mass procession to mark 100 years since the first British women won the right to vote. Prince Harry and his new wife Meghan will visit Australia, Fiji, Tonga and New Zealand later this year for their first overseas tour as a married couple. Austrian Chancellor Sebastian Kurz visited Israel's Holocaust Memorial and laid a wreath in memory of the late Israeli statesman Shimon Peres on the first leg of a two-day visit to Jerusalem. Archdiocese from the U.S. and Mexico hold a bi-national mass in a park in Tijuana on the U.S.-Mexico border. The mass aims to promote children's and immigrants' rights around the world. Heavy thunderstorms and rains uprooted trees and electric poles in northern India's Dehradun city, disrupting traffic and power supply and collapsing compound walls in the region. People in India's national capital, New Delhi, took to the streets during a child sex abuse awareness march on Sunday. The event was organized by a non-governmental organization, Samadhan, with an aim to spread awareness about child sex abuse in the society. Students of a fashion school in Gujarat State showcase clothes themed on menstruation-related problems at their annual fa fashion show held at an institute of fashion studies. The show was in part of an award show where uh, fashion students designed garments on several themes such as periods, no shame. An 18th century library in India's uh, northern Rampur city organized an exhibit of various types of rare and unique manuscripts and calligraphic versions of Islamic holy book of Quran. Tens of thousands of people from Spain's Basque country joined hands to form a human chain running some 202 kilometers to call for the right to hold a regional independent vote. A veteran in China's Hunan province rescued a young boy who was dangling from the fifth floor of an apartment building. He climbed the five floors and saved the child whose head was stuck in the balcony and feet flailing in the air. Continuous rains triggered landslides in Ganzhou city of East China province. Landslides blocked roads and affected people's lives at several places after excessive rains battered the region during the week. Sixty chefs from 24 countries served thousands of lunch boxes under humanitarian aid scheme, a world chefs without borders at Shwengdagon Pagoda in Myanmar.
Officials gave a press conference following a tour of the ongoing construction of the Grand Egyptian Museum in Giza on the southwest and outskirts of the capital Cairo. About 900 pupils play the Diabolus together at the playground during the daily class breaks in China's Dalian city. The Diabolo is also known as the Chinese Yo-Yo. Growing Chinese demand for quality wood floors and furniture has sent prices of French century old oaks soaring, leaving locals saw mills unable to compete and accusing exporters of putting the industry at risk as they lack wood to process. Thousands of people flock to the Biscarros uh, seaplane airbase in uh, southwestern France to admire a collection of legendary planes including the largest seaplane in the world as well as marine uh, rafales of French Air Force 